Hello, and as you saw by the title, my name is Carl Carlson, but I am also known as Sweat for Life on Reddit. And in this video, I'll be creating an illustration of a ferocious forgotten beast from the game Four Fortress. Now, this isn't the first time I've done an illustration of a forgotten beast. In fact, this will be the second time I've done it. The first time I've done it is with this illustration, which actually comes from this drawing made by the wonderful Dwarf Fortress storyteller Crux Smash in his absolutely fantastic series Honey Stoker. Speaking of Crux Smash, I've done this illustration, which is based on this scene from the same series. If you can't tell, I am a pretty big fan of Crux Smash. I think he's an absolutely wonderful storyteller with a wonderful sense of creativity. I think he's an absolutely fantastic storyteller and he's an absolutely amazing illustrator. And I, 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 you, you inspire me, Crocsmash. You inspire me to create these things. And for that, I really appreciate it. Now this illustration that I'll be creating is actually kind of a challenge to me since this isn't based on anything Crux Smash. In fact, what I did was creating a new world. Just a random small world with about a 250 year history. And when it was done generating, I looked into Legends mode and I looked around the historical feature section to see what Forgotten Beast called to me to create, to give it life. What I found was this Forgotten Beast. This Forgotten Beast is called Ukwari Aviurithi Atta or in its translated name, Ukwari Soil Thief, the Pebble of Vice. Now, let's take a look at its description. Ukwari Soil Thief, the Pebble of Vice, was a forgotten beast. It was the only one of its kind, a gigantic eyeless nightjar. It has two long hanging tails and it undulates rhythmically. Its flax feathers are patchy. Beware of its deadly spittle. Okwari was associated with jealousy and caverns. Now, taking a look at what is done throughout the years, it pretty much became an enemy to every civilization in the world in the span of three years and it devoured, struck down pretty much every dwarves, humans and Hey, look, take a look at that. A dwarf necromancer. In the late winter of 80, Okwari attacked the dwarf necromancer Asmel Depth's tomb. And in the same time, the dwarf necromancer Asmel Depth's tomb's upper right leg was smashed by the Forgotten Beast. But the necromancer managed to escape. And oh my god, sometime after that, it devoured a buck rabbit. Poor rabbit. Now this is a monster. Now this is truly a monster. Now that sounds like a pretty interesting forgotten beast. Now I have absolutely no idea what a night jar is. And looking it up on the internet, uh, it uh, looks like this. And yes, that's uh, a pretty majestic creature right there. Uh, let's see what it says on the Wikipedia. Well, according to Wikipedia, night jars are medium-sized nocturnal or crepuscular birds in the family of Caprimulgian, Caprimuldi, and the subfamily of Caprimulgine, and in the family of mm, that characterized by long wings, short legs, and very short beals. They are sometimes called Goat suckers due to the ancient folk tale that they suck the milk from goats. <laughs> oh my god, Harry Gould. Okay, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. Well, I'll take that into mind. Okay. With that information uh, in mind, Let's actually create this Forgotten Beast. 
So here I have my program of choice open, Adobe Illustrator, and as you can see, I have some reference images open, as well as the description of the creature and a few color schemes that I'll be using. Now, this may be too many, but it's better to have too much than too little. I usually work outside the document because looking at this all the time, it blinds me, so um, I think it's better to work in this very neutral working place. It's more easy on the eyes. Now, with all things ready, let's create the Forgotten Beast. What I usually do first when creating an illustration of any creature is a skeleton. This is because I want to create some kind of framework to get the proportions right. When I actually create an illustration, I usually do a segmented step-by-step -step process. I first start with the head, as you can see, then the body, then the arms slash wings, and then the legs, and then other details, such as patterns, hair, or whatever. And then lastly I do some adjustments to get the character looking right. The tool that I use the most when working in Illustrator is the pen tool, which gives me the control to create any free-flowing organic shape, which is usually pretty good when creating an illustration. Ah, as you just saw I created the head shape as well as the mouth and beak. Looking at the reference pictures, I saw that the nightjar had these kind of whisker-like uh, feathers or tendrils in their upper beak, which I thought was pretty nasty, pretty interesting there. So I put a few there, removed some of the whiskers to make it uneven and non-uniform, you know, because his feathers are patchy. Now you can see me there creating, or trying at least, to create these uh, hollow eye sockets, because, uh, well, it's eyeless but that really didn't turn out well. And there I created some patterns and a color shape, trying to correspond with the reference images that I had used. So here I am trying to perfect the patterns and colors, which I wanted to make it look as close as possible to a nightjar. This was kind of difficult, as you can see, but uh, you know, perfection isn't everything. So I just continued, and you, you saw me there creating the the mouth opening, the, 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 the throat hole, whatever it's called in English. Creating the body was a bit difficult because I wanted it to correspond with the skeleton framework that I made in the start. What I wanted was for the body to angle upwards so you can see the forgotten beast back behind its head, but uh, it turned out pretty wonky so 
what I did instead was angle the body downward so you can instead see its stomach and in my opinion it turned out way better than I thought it would and you can see me there trying to get the head to connect to the body in a visually pleasing way When I was done creating the body and head of the creature, I started to make the wings. And what I first did was uh, creating a shape that looked most like a feather to me, and then cutting it side by side to try and create uh, a uniform wing shape. <laughs> now that didn't turn out well, so what I did instead was create a few unique feather shapes, as well as a short but kind of uniform uh, feather shape that would, that would be placed in the upper middle of uh, the, the wing as to create a kind of illusion of layering. When I was done with that I sparsely placed the feathers on the wing as to correspond with the description but to also make it look uh, kind of battle scarred or sick or old you can make it as you want so I made it look like it was a bit uh, battle scarred. I also copied the looks and the colors using the reference images. And when I was done creating one wing, I copied the wing to the other side and adjusted the placement and shapes and spacing between the feathers to make it look unique. I didn't want to just copy paste the wings, that makes it look kind of bland and not very nice to my eyes. But to make it as you want, I did it so. And when I was done with that, I created a tail using the black feathers from the wings and adjusting the shapes and number of it to make it look patchy. And then came the tails. Now, my idea was for the tails to look like uh, the kind of tail feathers you see in Paradise Birds. So I put up some reference images and tried to recreate them. But later on I also saw that a specific species of nightjars actually have these kinds of uh, tails. So I also put uh, an image of that for reference.
Oh, and then came the legs. You would think that the, the legs would be the easiest part when it comes to creating an illustration of a bird, but no, it was actually kind of the hardest thing to create here. You can see me here trying to get the, the leg and the talons right, but it took quite a while until I got it how I wanted to. I used uh, a few reference images of eagles, hawks and other predatory birds to try and recreate the shape of uh, the legs and talons of it. It took a while, but I got it right in the end. And when I was done creating a few details on the creature here and there, I started to create the deadly spittle, which uh, just was a few droplet shapes. With that I was pretty much done with the creature, but I thought it would be funny to add a goat in the scene. You know, because uh, night jaws are also called goat suckers. But it didn't really turn out well, I didn't like the shape of the goat, I didn't really have the time to create a goat, so I just left that idea. And with that, I am done. Now let's take a look at what I've created.
Well, 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 take a look at that fucking beast. Wow, <laughs> this, this really, this really turned out well, I'm quite surprised, but it took about uh, six hours to create this, uh, <laughs> to create this creature, and which for me is quite quick, actually. Now, the other forgotten beast that I created, Blue Dawson here, took around 12 to 13 hours total to create, mostly because of the small details, the, the feathers. Well, now that I am done with this illustration, I really hope that you find this video quite enjoyable, and I hope you got some good information when it comes to character creation in this. I, I am, I am, I am a bit of a poor explainer, but uh, I do hope that you will be inspired to create something wonderful. It could be a drawing, it could be an illustration, it could be a video, it could be anything that calls to you. But anyways, I wish you the best of days for you and everybody around you. Thank you.